Hello, so I'm going to talk about uh, parallel Gaussian elimination for a goblin basis computation in the infinite field. It's a common work with Marshall Fogère. Uh, uh, we developed a library during my PhD thesis and then present the result in a PASCO conference in 2010. Those motivations were the, when I started my PhD thesis, there were no uh, specific tool for uh, computing linear algebra for Grobnet basis computations. Uh, and, uh, and the goal was to optimize the resolution of the system, of the polynomial system solving, and uh, for application in robotics, cryptology, or geometry, uh, computational geometry. Uh, so the main idea was to use the algorithm F4 and F5 uh, that generate uh, equivalent system easier to solve. And uh, the method rely on uh, linear algebra techniques. Uh, so we studied the structure of the matrices and uh, found common properties and tried to, to explore them. Uh, so uh, the algorithm that we present uh, is tuned for the shape of the matrix uh, generated by Rubin Bayes' algorithm F4 and F5. And we would try to implement it efficiently in C language and uh, to have uh, to parallelize the computation efficiently. So first I um, recall some uh, basic notions on Grobnet basis and uh, the link with linear algebra. In particular, uh, particularly the structure of the matrices from F4 and F5 algorithm. Then I present the specific algorithm. Uh, which compose of four steps, and uh, finally I will I will talk about how the, we implement it efficiently in C language and how we parallelize it. <coughs> so if you have a, a, a polynomial set S in the final field K, uh, you, and the monomial order uh, defined like this, uh, you can uh, represent uh, the system of S equations. Uh, with a matrix uh, in which uh, the ro each row corresponds to a polynomial and uh, each column to a monomial sort in, uh, in with respect to the order, monomial order, and uh, the east coefficient of the g row uh, corresponds to the coefficient of the monomial in the corresponding polynomial. With a little example, uh, we have two polynomials. Uh, the order in degree reverse is typographic and the monomial and uh, uh, the goal of the group negative computation is to exhibit a polynomial with a new leading term res with respect to uh, the order so uh, you, we have to multiply each polynomial by the, the correct monomial and uh, to, to create to generate a new polynomial with a new leading term, so with a linear algebra operation, this corresponds to a Gaussian elimination on the matrix representing the system. Uh, so during the computation, uh, we, we have to generate the different matrices and uh, to perform Gaussian elimination over them. It's the main cost of the global computation, and that's why we choose to try to optimize the, the, the computation and to reduce the cost of the, this step. Uh, because of uh, the monomial order, we cannot uh, switch the column, and uh, no, no permutation is allowed on, uh, on the column. Uh, for this, we use three elementary submatrices operations that we call TRSM for a triangular solver <coughs> with multiple right hand corresponding to multiply uh, matrix Y by the inverse of uh, matrix X. The XP operation corresponding to AX plus Y. And then the Gaussian elimination, so the classical Gaussian elimination on a smaller matrix, so on, on a reduced problem. Uh, with this method, um, the final result is not unique depending on the choices you make during the operation. So the ch this choice will be important and uh, to minimize the cost. So some recall on, on the Grobnet basis algorithm. Uh, the first one, 
implemented by Bloomberg and and uh, it, it relied on polynomial arithmetic and uh, it's hard to implement efficiently. Uh, and also, moreover, uh, all the time when you reduce polynomials together, uh, there are a lot of relations to zero. Then uh, Jean-Charles Foyer presented the F4 algorithm, which uh, used matricial representation of the systems and uh, perform linear algebra to, to solve the problem and to have an, uh, more efficiency. Uh, but in this case, there are also a reduction to zero and the matrices are uh, singular. In uh, 2002, uh, the F5 algorithm uh, has a new criterion to select the polynomials and uh, and the particular hypothesis is that no reduction to zero, so the matrices generated are full rank. And the, the, the computation is, is far more uh, efficient. So, uh, the matrices generated by F4 and F5 algorithm have uh, common properties. Uh, generals are rectangular, there are more columns than rows, sparse. Uh, several rows are generated as a, generated by the same polynomial multiplied by different uh, monomials. Uh, they are almost block triangular, not necessary for a rank depending on the algorithm, the algorithm uh, which generated them, and they can be huge. So uh, the most important thing for us is the block triangular shape. It's, uh, that's uh, this uh, this one that we are, we try to exploit. Uh, for an example, uh, matrix generated uh, from the problem Katsura 7. Uh, it's a, a small matrix over 700 rows and columns, uh, quite sparse with 8% non-development. And uh, in a 16-bit in six, uh, prime field uh, generated by F4 algorithm. So we get a graphic representation uh, in which uh, the black pixel, black pixel correspond to zero uh, coefficient and white pixel is the non zero coefficient. So if you zoom on a part of the matrix, uh, you, re you get uh, the structure presented before with uh, the polynomial corresponding on each row and monomial for the columns. Uh, so we can clearly see the, the almost triangle almost block triangular form and uh, the sparsity of the matrix. So the new specific algorithm uh, take benefit from this structure. Uh, the sparsity and the almost block triangular form. And for the sparsity we can use the uh, sparse linear algebra and uh, for the almost block triangular form uh, at the beginning of the computation we already know uh, uh, a part of the, the pivots. And uh, the, uh, the algorithm must be consistent with the classification of the matrix during the computation, the Gaussian elimination. Uh, so the, the rows are going to become more dense, and uh, we have to adapt with this modification. So the main idea is the predetermination of the part of the P, which is the, uh, the essential point of the algorithm. And, uh, um, we have to treat differently uh, each uh, coefficient, uh, if it, it, it corresponds to a pivot column or a non-pivot column, because uh, in the pivot column we, we will see that uh, we already know the result, so we don't need to write it, only to read. And for the non-pivot uh, co columns, we have to read and write, because uh, the information will be in this column at the end of the matrix, and it will become more dense. So the sketch of the algorithm, uh, there are four steps. So the first one corresponds to analyze, to analyze the matrix and to look for the evident pivots. So you have to, to, to get every, each entry of the, each row and to try to find uh, uh, the evident pivot. And uh, we see that you can decompose the initial matrix in four step matrices and then we we, uh, the, this, the, the, this two and A and B correspond to the, to the pivot rows. Now the first step is to reduce these pivot rows together and then to apply the reduction on the other rows. Uh, at the end of the second step, 
uh, all the world of the matrix uh, will be reduced by the pivot rows, so the evident pivot rows. So the, the third step is to look for the pivots that were not evident in the first matrices. So uh, we will perform a classical Gaussian elimination on, uh, on this matrix, which is uh, in general um, uh, not not so big that the initial problem. It's a prediction of the problem. So the, this Gaussian elimination, uh, the cost is uh, less important than the global cost. And finally, we reconstruct the matrix from uh, from these four matrices. We apply the inverse transformation. So for the analysis, I represent the shape of a group the matrix. Uh, group matrix. So uh, uh, it's, it's, you may see the almost block triangular form, and uh, under the, 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 uh, the lower part is equal to zero. So the the algorithm consists to to look for every uh, pivot column. So a pivot column is a, a column in which a row has its first coefficient, non zero coefficient. So here we we write every pivot column, we note the, the list C uh, here, and for each pivot column, we, have, we may have uh, several, uh, several candidates, so we choose one of these candidates, for example, with, uh, with respect to density or other criterion, and uh, for each pivot column, we mark uh, one ruler. Uh, so for, for example, in these two columns that are no pivot and, uh, and this column are non-pivot column and we go on until we obtain uh, a list uh, for uh, pivot rows. So from this <coughs> pivot and uh, row, uh, pivot rows and column uh, we can uh, compose <coughs> this initial matrix in four sub-matrices. We note uh, A, the matrix containing uh, row pivot and uh, column pivot coefficient, B matrix for uh, row pivot and non-pivot column coefficient, uh, and so on, C uh, with, uh, corresponding to non-pivot rows and uh, pivot column, and G non-pivot rows and non-pivot columns. So if we get uh, the previous example, the four matrices are represented here. So uh, the matrix A containing the pivot is the upper triangular force. Uh, and the, the matrix C and D uh, contains the non-pivot codes uh, in which we, we, didn't, we didn't keep the, the pivot. So now to reduce all the rows by the pivots, we, we start by reducing the pivot rows together. So from a linear algebra point of view, it corresponds to computing a uh, theorem operation. So B receives uh, the uh, add to the minus 1 multiplied by B. And the uh, A the, the A matrix receives the identity. So uh, all, the, all the information is contained in the new matrix B, which becomes more dense. And uh, the initial matrix, as this step, is equivalent to this matrix. Block identity, uh, I, I to the A to minus 1 B, C and D. Then we have to reduce the other rows by the, 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 the pivot rows. So from the linear algebra, it corresponds to the max phi operation. So we compute uh, G received D uh, minus C multiplied by B. And uh, C receives zero because uh, this part is reduced by uh, the identity matrix. So the initial matrix becomes equivalent to this matrix, the previous part, and here we put zero to reduce uh, the non pivot rows by the pivot rows. After we have to find the, the final step is to find the pivots that were not evident at the beginning. So we perform a Gaussian elimination on the, on the matrix D, uh, the new matrix D, and uh, we get uh, the, the pivot that we didn't have previously. So uh, here, the, the cost of the, this step uh, is uh, less important.
important than the global cost. And at the end, we reconstruct the final matrix uh, with the, the rows and pivot and columns, uh, the rows and column pivots lists, and uh, the, the new matrices B and D. Each has the columns of B and D, and, uh, and the, the identity uh, corresponds to the column of A. So this matrix is almost in a Russian form, but not always, because we haven't finished. Uh, we have reduced uh, all the, the, this column by the new pivots. So if we want to compute a, a reduced session form, we have to to apply a second second iteration of the algorithm. But for our problem, it wasn't uh, necessary. But we can do it. <coughs> so how we have implemented this uh, algorithm efficiently in C language? Uh, we have to choose uh, correct data structures for uh, each kind of matrix. So we differentiate matrices A and C corresponding to uh, pivot columns. And these matrices are sparse. We also know the result for matrix A will become the identity matrix and the matrix A will become the zero matrix. So we only uh, read only access to this matrix. Uh, and uh, for matrix B and D, it's not the same. Uh, they, were, they, were will, they are sparse at the beginning and become more dense and uh, we need to read and write uh, these matrices. Uh, and the final, uh, final point to exploit in the in recent XP operation, the operation of, of the columns are independent so we, we will be able to parallelize uh, the computation. So uh, to benefit from cache memory, we use block in uh, our matrices, we will use the locality and benefit from the speed up in uh, by the cache memory. And uh, we have to adapt the structure of matrix B and D to the densification occurring during the computation. So we have to use hybrid structure. So I, uh, I'll explain after what I mean by hybrid structure. And uh, after, since uh, the operation of the column are independent, we will see how to parallelize the, the algorithm. Uh, so uh, we decompose our matrices in blocks, and uh, we have four block types. Uh, the two first one corresponding to sparse block of matrix E and C, triangular blocks and rectangular blocks. Uh, and for the matrix B and D, we have hybrid rectangular blocks, uh, which uh, have to to be compliant with the densification. And at the end, uh, final dense rectangular, rectangular block for temporary com computation. As we choose to, to use to perform computation in a small prime file field, uh, we, we reduce the, we limit the size of 16 bits. The dense rectangular uh, block uh, perform computation in, in Z uh, on a, a 4 bits, so uh, we don't need to reduce, uh, to have field reduction, we limit the number of field reduction as much as possible to optimize the computation. And uh, then we uh, implement three blocks operation, uh, the JSM block operation, x and plus motion elimination on, uh, on the blocks. Uh, an important thing is that uh, in this uh, structure, the elements are written in the orders are used to to you benefit from uh, local to exploit locality and uh, use the, memory, the cache memory. So uh, the decomposition of uh, our four matrices. So uh, here we have a triangular block, rectangular blocks, pass, and here every blocks. So we choose uh, the size of the block for the A matrix, which gives the size of the block for the rows of the B matrix. We chose uh, a cycle block for the column of B, which fix it for D, and uh, we have some like to choose the uh, cycle of the block for so the C. Uh, the coefficient I've written the order that I've used, so we use by rows. All of the coefficients are uh, written by rows, and uh, from the bottom to top, and the right to the left for A matrix, and from bottom to top, and uh, left to the right for B matrix. It's a choice. We, 
the important thing to notice is that we have to write the, the element in the order that we use in the implementation. So for the block decomposition, the data structure, for the first block, we use three lists for, uh, for writing the values of the non-zero element, the position, and the number of non-zero element in a row. And for tenth blocks, we only use uh, the values and uh, we stop them on uh, 64 bits and figures. And for the hybrid blocks, we uh, fix a threshold for the density and under when the density is less than the threshold, we use a sparse representation of the row. And if the density is, uh, is more than the, the, the threshold, we use the tense format and uh, we use the tense linear algebra. Whereas in the, for the sparse format, we can use sparse linear algebra. So just an example for the block hybrid to resend. So in, in entry inputs, we have uh, the sparse block train block A and the hybrid rectangular block B. And the output is the hybrid rectangular B equal to uh, A my, I A to the minus 1 multiplied by B. So uh, the idea is to uh, to loop over the, the rows of the block A and uh, to use a temporary block dense and so we, we convert the, the dense block from B to the hybrid block to a dense format and, um, and we perform only the operation of the non-zero element we perform a row combinations uh, and uh, if the density of uh, each row of B is less than the threshold, we use sparse linear algebra, uh, else we use dense linear algebra. And at the end, we, we convert the dense block to a hybrid format and, and get the new block B, the new result. So, in an example, uh, we have this country A of a triangular in sparse. So, we fix, uh, we choose uh, the size of the block equal to 3. And uh, we use three lists to score the element, the values, the position, and the number on the element per row. So here, yeah, uh, we only we don't need to store the this coefficient because they are no, they are equal to one. Uh, and so we only took the non-zero element of the row from the bottom to the top and from the, the right to the left. So here we have the element two in position zero, one element in this row and one element in this row, the element the value three in position one. Now the same layout for the blocks from the bottom to the top and the right to the left. So we we'll continue with the second block with the rectangular block. And then and then we write the element in the same with the same layout. Continue like this to get the three list. So this matrix is equivalent to this three list. And uh, with uh, our, our previous example, uh, here the density will equal to three persons for the A matrix. And uh, in the dense representation, we have about three and a half uh, ki uh, kilobytes. Whereas with this uh, representation, we are, we are ten, uh, almost ten less than one. For the dense matrix, or uh, matrix B, uh, we choose a, the, the, the size of the row is fixed by the, the size chosen for the block of A. So we, all, we can only choose the size of the block over the columns. And we choose a trestle uh, to switch between sparse and dense representation equal to 50%. Uh, so in this block, if uh, a row has more than two than zero coefficients, we store it uh, in a dense representation. And if uh, the number of non zero elements is less than two, we store it in sparse form. So the layout, uh, the elements are stored by rows and from uh, the bottom to the top and to the left, from the left to the right. So the first row here is one zero four. So it's represented in sparse format, so we store the one in the four, the position, and the number of non-zero elements in the row. Uh, the third row is uh, 
then so we only store the coefficient and the number and the relevant form, but we don't need to store the positions. Uh, here, for the second block, uh, the first row is sparse, but the second row has three non zero elements, so we store it in dense format to so rewrite the row and uh, write there are four elements in this row, but we don't store the positions. Here, there's no position. We continue uh, like this, because there are the matrix, and the matrix B is equivalent to uh, these three lists. Now, how to perform a block hybrid to resume operation from these two blocks? So here we suppose that uh, the coefficient of the first row of A is equal to zero, and the two, two coefficients of the second row are not zero. So we want to multiply uh, B, block B by uh, the inverse of uh, block A B. So uh, we here there's nothing to do because uh, it's equal. Uh, there's no reduction, so we only store the modular reduction if we need. For the simple flow, it's the same because the question is up to zero, so there's nothing to do. Only to store the the, mod the field reduction of the row. And for the sub uh, sub row, uh, we have to use the temporary block uh, in dense format. So. Here the, the third row of P was sparse, so we convert from sparse to dense format in the temporary block. Uh, we per and then we, uh, we use the non-zero element of the row of AG block and uh, perform uh, the, the operation. So we have to multiply the, the coefficient by the row. So, so in dense or sparse format, depending on the format of the row, here for the first row of B, B. I, it's a dense operation, and uh, for example, for the second one corresponding to A2, it's a it's a sparse operation. So we uh, we see we we benefit from the, the hybrid structure using linear sparse linear algebra or dense linear algebra to to minimize the, the cost of the computation. When we use uh, dense linear algebra, we can optimize and have a good performance here using locality and, in, uh, and when there are no, not a lot of coefficients we can benefit from the efficiency of passing algebra when computing only what we need. And at the end of the computation we have to reduce the temporary block we have the computation where in uh, Z and we have to reduce it and to convert to a dance or to a hybrid uh, form. So if, uh, the new coefficient, the formula coefficient, are uh, all almost all equal to zero. We store it in sparse format, and is otherwise or uh, else we stop in dense format. And uh, we keep a, a hybrid structure, so the result has the same structures as the input. For the Gaussian uh, elementary step, we have to to make it compliant with the block decomposition. So we choose to use a pseudo inverse matrix, and uh, first uh, we 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 concatenate uh, the first block with the identity matrix, perform the Gaussian elimination on the block, and uh, get the, oper the corresponding operation in the matrix P. And after we multiply to update the second block to apply the operation of the operated on the first block to the second, we multiply by the P matrix and. Uh, Continue the reduction from uh, the, the row we missed up from the rank of the first one, and so on. We continue and until we are we are uh, we reduce all the blocks. So this Gaussian elimination is compliant with the block decomposition, and we don't need to to rewrite another time the matrices. This step is sequential. Uh, this uh, computation depends on the, the result of the one. So we cannot uh, we cannot parallelize this step, and uh, the cost of the the size of the matrices must be uh, small enough to 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 not be the main cost of the algorithm to, to have a parallel uh, implementation, an efficient parallel implementation. So for the parallelization, we choose uh, multi-threading implementation for shared memory architecture. Uh, we choose to parallelize about the block columns, which are independent from the uh, TRS and the And uh, 
uh, in thread operate on a block and he performed uh, a kind of operation for uh, a column block. So we have to define uh, the creator of the priority of the operation. Uh, as I said before, the Gaussian elimination is sequential, so as soon as we can perform uh, a Gaussian elimination uh, on the block, we have to do it. So uh, because uh, it depends on the result of the two first, the boss first of, uh, block operation. And then, if there uh, no, no Gaussian elimination possible, we try with Max5 because uh, the result depends on the theory sign. And uh, if we don't have any Max5 operation to perform, we perform a theory sign operation. So, the strategy to minimize, minimize the latency periods is to uh, perform as soon as possible Gaussian elimination on the block and after it's five, and then theory sign. So uh, we define the practical section and sequence and synchronization point and uh, the implementation where we make the positive threads and mutex. So here, the previous uh, diagram with respect to the, the parallelization. So the analysis, the first type of analysis is sequential. Then uh, each thread uh, performs a block operation and the thread uh, has to perform as soon as possible motion elimination. These are no x and these are no TRS. And uh, for each step there are synchronization points and at the, at the end of the computation we can look to the, the final matrix. And to just understand this right, so you can't do API until you're done with TRSM all of it. Uh, Block, if you have done one and a half, then you can move on to do XPY. Uh, for performing an XP operation over D2, for example, you have to uh, you have to perform the TRSM operation over it on, on the first or second block because you have to compute D minus. Uh, so to do D2, do you only have to do D2, or can you do like? No, for the Gaussian elimination, you have to perform all the previous blocks. But for the XPI, you only have to have perform the TRSM. So why do you have this uh, uh, XPI? Yeah, the, the, it's just a check for each uh, synchronization point. You, you can choose, uh, well, you look for the this. It's only to look for the first and this you can well, on which you can perform a block operation. It's not a real synchronization, it's not a buyer. So Okay, so you could have different goals doing like yeah. one goals doing something in the top row, some other goals doing something in the middle, and the third goals doing something in the top row. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for the you, you first you go you, you look for this operation. If there are no block available we we'll try to look here, uh, and uh, for performing a version of this block, the the TRS must have been done on the on the, the this and this. Okay, you don't have to finish all of the two other. No, that is the first one. Only the same. Uh, the, it's only for the motion elimination that you have to perform the previous um, blocks. These two operations are uh, uh, independent of the blocks. If you have a block, if this block is updated, if you have computed i, I minus, minus 1 multiplied by bk minus 2, you can perform a, the x by yeah, on this block. Unless if you have not computed, if you have not computed the x by on d2, d2, for example. So uh, the experimental results, uh, we benchmark uh, on uh, Katsura problems uh, uh, on the 16-bit uh, film prime field uh, with a eight thread on uh, eight core uh, computer. Uh, so the results are 17 seconds. Uh, we have.
at uh, the, the value of n for each problem and the uh, index, the number of the matrix uh, we use. So here's the matrix. Mm -hmm. Matrix are, are about uh, 4,000 equations, rows and columns to uh, 4, 400,000. And uh, we give the time obtained by FTB, uh, the software developed by Charles Roger from the company basis, and uh, the, the time obtained to reduce this matrix with a new library in sequential mode and in parallel. And here's the speed up. Oh, no, here it is the result of our parallel implementation. So we can see that uh, we obtain a, a speed up more important than the number of the cores. So in sequentially, the algorithm is more efficient. And moreover, uh, the speed up is non, uh, non linear. You get, uh, the speed up is, is, um, uh, is bigger when the uh, matrix becomes bigger. So it's, uh, we didn't expect this result. We only expect to have a linear uh, constant speed up, and the speed up increases with the size of the matrices. So, so in this table, so it's the FTB single core pair. Uh, FTB single core pair. And, and the, the other row is only cores. Uh, yeah. So, so the difference is both the software and the number of, of, of cores. Yeah. It's the same computer, but used with only, uh, I don't, we use, uh, I don't, on one core. And the time you have for the linear algebra only? Mm -hmm. The time you have only linear algebra or the whole? Only the linear algebra from the, the, each matrix. It's only one matrix in the computation. <coughs> so another example, uh, that's the last 15. Uh, here we can see for each matrix the speed up. So uh, these parts correspond to a small matrix or almost reduced matrix. So the time of the computation is not very uh, important. The big part of the computation stay here, and it's where uh, the algorithm is, uh, is really efficient. Here, if there are nothing to do in the matrix, if they are almost reduced, uh, the cost of decomposition and the block operation uh, is bad for the performance, whereas when uh, the matrix has a good shape and uh, there are a lot of computation to perform, here uh, we, have the best, uh, we have the best performances, and here uh, the, the speed up is non-linear and uh, is, uh, is uh, the best for the biggest, the biggest matrix and the biggest computations. So with eight cores, we get uh, a speed up about 20 for this matrix. Uh, another benchmark. So here we compare with FGB and with Magma uh, for F4 and F5 matrices. Magma, uh, we use the F4 implementation of Available in Magma. So uh, this, these two rows are well, uh, the same that as presented before. And uh, with respect with Magma, uh, the speed up in the, in the, uh, about 8, so uh, the sequential uh, implementation is uh, almost the same, but uh, we, can, uh, we have a uh, gain due to the parallelization. And uh, for F5 matrices, here uh, the speed up is. Uh, much more, we get more than 60 for the biggest matrices. Uh, in Magma, we take 10,000 seconds, and here we have uh, about 3 minutes for the computation. Uh, so the previous one? Uh, yeah, the, the, first, uh, the first table is for F4 matrices, for the extra problem 11, 12, 13. So for, uh, and uh, here, there are F5 matrices generated by F5, so the matrices are full rank. Yeah. So my mind is in F4 matrices, so it was to see if we want to solve a problem the most efficiently we can, we have to use F5, but it's not available in my mind. It's just to have an order. Okay, so, so in, a, in a sense you're comparing apples and, apples and oranges, right? Excuse me? It looks like you are comparing apples and oranges in the last table because uh, Magma does not have, have F5 matrices. It solves yeah. Yeah, it's only to have the best implementation okay. available. Okay. You have a question? So, F5 and 2 and 12 is the same as F4 and 2 and 12 above for Magma? Yes, because Magma don't have an yeah. F5 implementation. It's the same matrix, yeah, I have to, uh, to write it. It's, uh, it's for F4. So, it's about one minus 
Good man. The bottom example of homogeneous? Is that homogeneous? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same issue, like homogeneous equation and homogeneous equation. You have the same one. You have no solution at, at infinity. Yeah. It is like a random system, you know. That's, that's right. So here we get uh, real pillars, and uh, with only a call, we get uh, we get uh, real benefits with this power implementation. Because in sequential it's efficient and uh, it's parallelizable, and the latency periods are minimized because we order the operation in a good way. And finally, uh, for another problem, which is mid one problem, uh, we see uh, here is the number of threads, and here, uh, here is the speed up. So uh, we get, uh, we get, we can see that uh, the speed up is almost efficient. Uh, I think in some matrices and uh, the speed up. So we get uh, almost, uh, almost uh, uh, optimal speed up of about eight with eight cores. So, uh, Speed up is always near to eight, and uh, unless uh, the global operation is sequential, we we all organize the operation to parallelize it and minimize the, the latency period. So to conclude, uh, we have presented a new specific Gaussian elimination algorithm from Gaussian basis uh, from matrix matrices generated by F4 and F5 algorithm. We did an, an efficient implementation in C language, and uh, it's almost optimal uh, for parallel implementation. The gate uh, is almost optimal, uh, uh, whereas uh, the operation, the global operation, is, in, in, uh, is not uh, fully parallel; it's, uh, it's sequential. So uh, the perspective is to uh, optimize the memory because. Uh, the rewriting of the cost, and the, you have the, you need to double of the memory to, to perform the, the decomposition of the matrix. We want to to interface it fully with uh, the FDB software, and why not integrating it to, in uh, another tool or so developing a new code for uh, another tool. So thank you for your attention. If you have questions, and it was a plus, sorry. Uh, do you do timings of the cost of branch mispredictions in your code regarding to the fact that you have two formats? And um, in your examples, you had tiny matrices, but uh, I suspect that your blocks are in fact larger. Uh, but uh, it seems to me that uh, you might encounter lists of coefficients in a row which are pretty small, uh, implying the fact that you probably will get branches which are mispredicted pretty often. Or the defining threshold, for example, between uh, sparse and dense uh, in our yeah, program. this sort of thing. Or just uh, I mean, you necessarily have a loop on uh, all coefficients of, uh, of the row, but uh, this row could have uh, once two coefficients and once uh, seventeen or whatever. So uh, this leads to a situation where uh, intrinsically you have a, a branch which is going to be mispredicted. Did you evaluate the cost of that or not? Uh, no, we only uh, try to minimize the memory because it's. Uh, okay. So we choose a representation for minimizing the memory. Okay, but what? Then I have a second question precisely on this. Uh, what is the net cost in terms of bytes per coefficient of your representation of coefficients for the sparse format? Is it uh, so you have one byte, for, uh, one word for coefficients, and do you, do you do you pay a total of one word for the rest, a total of two words, or uh, depending on the size of the blocks? Yeah, but, uh, depending on the that's still the matrix, but we, uh, we get uh, 16 bits uh, for position and values, the same. So uh, the okay. sparse representation needs uh, twice more uh, memory. So when the density is less than 50%, we use the sparse representation. Okay, so in total, in total 64 bits. And the temporal block, temporary block, use uh, 64 bits. Okay. But it's only used once, you know, we, we unpack the, uh -huh. uh, the row in uh, I, I, each time we need to compute the reduction. Try to do more than eight cores. Uh, more than eight cores? Yes. Yeah, we try and we have uh, 
we have uh, some problems with uh, to, to have more than more than eight uh, again more than eight. We have a bottleneck. We don't know exactly where maybe in the model. Okay, so at some point you're gonna have yes, another time you can use extra more calls. And so what is the like the wrong point where it doesn't tell that much to add another call? We didn't understand the, the, the a lot of problems. Uh, uh, we, we, this is a real uh, hall, and we have uh, tried recently on the uh, uh, recent computer. So we had uh, eight calls. We tried once with uh, 16 calls, but uh, we saw that the game was uh, at the bottom like that we didn't have any. We have to search uh, to optimize uh, exactly what happens. We, we tried only on one computer with four processors and each processor was a four core. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems that there is kind of bottleneck on this computer because it was the same for another implementation. Mm -hmm. Not this one, but uh, we have always this limit of uh, eight cores for this computer. Right? Okay. So we, don't, we don't find a bigger... Which kind of CPU was it? Right. Which kind of CPU was it? Exactly, you want to. Exactly uh, I want to know whether it's pre Nihalem or post. Yeah, because I mean, on the old core 2s, uh, mm -hmm. before the Nihalem, uh, you had only one uh, access to the memory per, per, per CPU, so. No, no, it was not this one, but uh, I can tell you, but I have to okay. check. Okay. Yeah, I think we have time for one more the matrix R A, yeah. and you were able to, to find that square full run matrix. Are, are you making assumptions about the matrices to begin with, or is this always possible to find no. this matrix A without swapping columns? It's always possible because of the structure of the running basis computation. You have one polymer, you multiply by a different monomer, so you switch the rows. Uh, so we naturally you have a triangle of block. Uh, triangle over shape, but uh, sometimes you have more uh, the, pro the proportion of pivot of evident pivot are bigger for some example for class of problems. So the algorithm uh, works better for a class of problems than for others. But the same for the sparsity. For some problems, the matrices are more dense than for others. So, so uh, the efficiency re rely on the sparsity and the number of uh, evident pivot. So sometimes it's good, sometimes it's less But so this would not work for a random matrix? No, it does not work. Random matrix is coming out from the random matrix. Yeah, it's a specific algorithm for random matrix. And how do you select your pivot? For the rows? Yes. For the column, it's evident. And for the row, we choose we choose the less dense. Coefficient because uh, the cost uh, depend for the last by production depends on the number of non zero elements of the A matrix. And does it make a big difference if you don't do any prediction, just choose one by random? Uh, I think it's uh, hard to generalize. Mm -hmm. and sometimes we get better, uh, other times it's worse. I mean, we only want it to limit the memory in one way because so, uh, the first. Uh, this criterion was about memory, not the performance. Uh, of the steps that you're using, uh, how long does each step take? So, so, so like, what is the breakdown of time? Which one is the most expensive? What is uh, the proportion? Uh, the most expensive is uh, X5 because uh, the biggest matrices. After uh, the zero sum, after the X5 and the Gaussian animation. Uh, must be a very small view with respect to the two others. That's why you cannot parallelize uh, efficiently. So uh, but the, the big cost is uh, the two first steps. The big steps. Yeah, the biggest one. No, 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 the two first uh, linear algebra. The analysis is linear, so it's, it's three and uh, it's uh, in, in the uh, the, the two The two matrices operation. Any idea of the proportion of time, 80%? Uh, depends on the examples, but uh, I, could, I could show you in the article, so we have a more present resolution. 
Yeah. So you know that this matrix has a special property that many of the rows are really different when only multiples of the same polynomial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you use that in your implementation somehow? No, not yet. I mean, could I uh, try to use it for, uh, for um, compact the representation? But uh, with the button, it was not. Uh, um, you can uh, not use this in blood decomposition because it was breaking the structure, so we, don't, we couldn't use it, but uh, it can be a, another, an idea to optimize the memory. And how does this work for F5? We have restrictions, uh, restrictions on the reducers. I mean, in F5, you have restrictions on the reducers of with what polynomials you can reduce and with what not, because of the signatures. I mean, how does this work? So, so I mean, in F5, in F5 algorithm, you have restrictions for your reducers due to the signatures. Yeah? yeah? You cannot do every reduction yeah, yeah. in effect. So how does this work in this case? I mean, if you swap around... I mean, th these are swaps in, 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 in the rows, so you cannot do every row yeah, you swap. Can reduce, uh, you can always mm -hmm. reduce up... So you just sort it this way, and then you can reduce up to... Yeah, uh, the, the first uh, step was to... The algorithm was designed for F4. Yeah. We performed uh, tot uh, total uh, reduce relation form. Okay. And uh, for F5, we only uh, reduce... Uh, Partial, okay. Partially. Okay. So, so. You showed a picture where there was A and B, and B was much smaller than A. Yeah. Is that usually the case? Uh, no. It depends on the examples. And then, uh, in general, B can be bigger than A. Depending on the matrix, is uh, is really in, uh, really rectangular on it. So you can show matrix. But B is more memory because it gets dense. Yeah. So yeah. so it should be that it has to be careful. Yeah. You have to be that it has to be careful. Yeah. In B and D, you have to be careful because uh, they, are, they are very they are, they are, they are the cost of the memory. Yeah. I've been trying to show what the biggest step in the gap to the program breaks in the Because it wasn't talking to me. The, the time that you show. So is this the, the largest the biggest the, the for the, the biggest matrices? Yeah, so so the, there's some difference in, in this shape of the matrix between the intermediate steps and the last gap to the Is this the time for the larger We are all, always. Take uh, matrices in this area, so the most, uh, the biggest matrices mm -hmm. and the main cost of the algorithm. But it's not 90% uh, of the computation, it's 30% uh, or 40% because uh, several matrices yeah, are a uh, big cost. Yeah. So we pick one in the, the, the big time, in the bigger time, but not, uh, it's not, uh, it's a part of non negotiable of the global timing, but not. Uh, only the global timing for one matrix. It's uh, four or five times uh, the time, uh, time we get. And this case, B is really small, and A is very For uh, this matrix, yes. Yeah. No, for, for, for the, this one? Uh, Here in this one, the matrices are reduced, there are no operation to perform, they are only in, the, in the reduced form. And here we have a lot of computation, but you know, not depending on the size of the. It's really a typical shape. You can, you can prove, in fact, that the maximum cost is about asymptotically at 70%. Here at the end, you have the regularity of your system. Mm -hmm. Uh, asymptotically, the, the maximum cost for a uh, generic system is about uh, 70 or 80 percent of the degree of reality. If you, get, you, you can analyze the, the size of the matrix system, so, and so it is quite difficult to. It is not always like that, of course, but the regular plan is that.
No more questions. So let's thank the speaker. And I guess after so many questions, we have to serve five minutes.